Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Deron with DeronSupply.com, where I help you design smarter, not harder. Let's go over how I made my favorite graphic of all time. It's the sights you can't unsee design that I did for hard jewelry back in 2022. It's actually more of an artwork than a design to me because I feel like it really tied in on my past experiences and education in fine arts into the digital realm. So I actually used to do fine arts before I did graphic design. I went to school for it. I wouldn't say I was anywhere near being a pro, but it did teach me a whole lot about composition, shading, value, framing, and so on. And all that good stuff till this day really helps me in my design work. This artwork in particular was a mix of a lot of compositing and shading, and it just kind of felt like chipping away at like a painting or something. Obviously a way different process being, you know, it's digital, but it helped me to look at it that way. And I'm really proud of what I came up with. So let's hop into Photoshop and break it down. So this was the final artwork that ended up getting printed on shirts and tote bags for HJ's Las Vegas pop-up. And I'd be damned if I didn't have the actual shirt. So of course, Will sent me one because he's the GOAT and experience you can't unsee. I don't know why I didn't wear this to be honest. Hold on. There we go. Much better. So Will, the owner of HJ, works very closely with me on the concepts for our designs. In the past, we've done lots of designs with hands wearing the hardware rings or whatever, the bracelets, which is a pretty obvious concept to come up with. But it's always sort of a struggle because we kind of have to Photoshop the rings and bracelets and whatever onto the hand. So that was super counterintuitive and it just didn't look too good. I can never get the right angle of the ring on the right angle of the finger and so on. So Will was kind enough to just take these pictures for me this time around. And that's what I used. We actually originally had this reference of his hand crawling out of an eye. And that was actually the first version of the design that we created. So you can see here the first final design that I did. Obviously I had to Photoshop the rings and stuff onto the hand and it just didn't look too flattering. So I was super happy to receive these pictures from Will because obviously he's the guy with all the jewelry. I only have a few of, of their pieces and their rings. So he put on some of the rings, he took these pictures from me and we had a ton of different ideas. So you can see here, this is actually, I think the one that I used for the design. This is like if you were pulling an eyelid open or something like that. We also had one of these where this would work, for example, if I was doing the, the hand crawling out of the eye concept. Here's just some more of those that we had to work with. I was super, super happy to get these pictures. It just made my job so much easier. So I wanted to work with this concept. I wanted to do the hands kind of pulling the eyelid open. So I used this photo, but I needed the photo of the eye. So I just found a stock photo, I think, of someone pulling at their eyelids, as you can see here. And from here begins all the compositing. So I'm just gonna take you layer by layer and show you exactly what I did. So like I said, this was the picture that I started with. The first thing that I wanted to do was fade out the obviously the edges of the image to just isolate the eye. So I did that with this layer mask here. I just took a soft brush and painted around the edges of the image and kind of isolated the parts of the eye that I wanted to use. The second thing I needed to do was actually completely desaturate this and make it black and white because I was going to color this in completely on my own anyway. So I didn't want to worry about any of the colors and get distracted by that when I'm planning to blend with the values and shades of just black and white. So up a few layers here, I had a black and white adjustment layer. I turned that on so you could see exactly what I was doing as I was creating this. I had this layer above the composite the whole time so that I wouldn't have to worry about any color. I could just worry about the black and white shading really. So then I also had this fade layer down here. So if I turn this on and off, you can see it kind of just increases the contrast a little bit. I'm pretty sure what I did here was just isolate the highlights of this photo using color range so I went up to select color range and pick the highlights and then selected and duplicated those out and then I just overlaid it on top of this image to give it more contrast and I also thought that I gave it this cool kind of wet look which I really liked so I kept that in next up we have the hands which as you know I isolated from the photos that Will took for me so this was just my rough selection and placing to make sure that it all fit correctly with the image below and then I just got a fine selection of both the hands and made a layer mask for them and since this was going to be on a t-shirt design I had to fade out the hands as well to kind of frame the composition so I layer masked those out as well. I just took a soft brush really and painted along the edges of the hands. I did that for both of them. And this was looking pretty good already, but it's not compositing if you don't workshop the lighting a little bit or a lot of it actually. So the lighting on the hands or the picture of the hands was pretty flat as you could see. And the lighting on the picture of the eye was a little bit more dramatic and had harsher shadows than the pictures of the hands. So I wanted to match the lighting a bit more. And to do that, I have to paint in my own shadows and highlights on the hands. And that's exactly what I did. And to do that, I used gray layers, pretty much like a dodge and burn method. So I used a 50% gray layer and then just painted on those with black or with white and had them set to overlay and soft light. So what that does is just darken or light in the image or parts of the image based on where you paint in 
on that gray layer. So I painted in the shadow for this bottom hand here on this gray layer. And I also painted in the highlights for this bottom hand. And I'll zoom in here so you can see and understand this a little bit better. So when I'm painting in the shadows and highlights on this hand to match the image below it, obviously the most important thing is to consider the light source of this image. So for the image of the eyes, the light is shining from sort of the top left coming down in this direction, which we can tell because of the highlights on the eyes here and this reflection in the pupil as well as the reflections in this part of the eye. The image as a whole is also just brighter on the left side than it is on the right side. So when I'm painting in these shadows and highlights for the hand, I just had to consider where the lighting was coming from. So I made the left sides of the hand lighter than the right side and obviously I had to follow the contour of the fingers and the planes of the hand when I'm painting this in. So I'm going to turn both these layers to normal just to show you exactly what I painted in for this. So I just used a soft brush with a lower opacity and probably I should have used a lower flow which is usually what you do when you're painting with a soft brush or, or a brush in Photoshop, but I don't know why I didn't do that. Either way, as you can see, I painted in the highlights on the rim or edge of the finger here to kind of match the light shining up on that and reflecting off of that. I did that for the thumb as well, and then I figured that light would kind of die down as we go from finger to finger or from left to right. And then I also painted in the shadow on the opposite side of the finger because obviously once the light hits this side of the finger, it's not going to reach this side of it, so there's going to be some shadows there. So here's the before and after of painting these shadows in on the hand to match the lighting a bit better. So here's the before and here's the after. And I think that plays a lot better with the image below it. And of course, I did the same exact thing for the top hand up here. So I have this global shadow layer, which I painted in the shadows, again, according to the light of the image below it. And then same deal for the highlights. I painted in the highlights on the rims of these fingers and just sort of brighten the image up from left to right according to the light source. And also I have this fill shadow which controls the shadow of the fingers down here. So after the knuckle bends, I figured the light would kind of reach it less, especially because it's kind of gripping into the eye here. So I just made this bottom part after the knuckle darker as a whole. And then I fixed the nail down here with this nail layer here, just made it a bit brighter because you know, it's a nail. And then I did the same thing to the hands like I did for the eye here. So how I isolated these highlights using color range and gave it that wet look and also just increase the contrast. I did the same for the hand, so I have this layer here where I isolated sort of these specular highlights and duplicated those out just to kind of give it more of a shine. So the shadows on the hands look good and the images are matching in terms of light source, but there's no real blending between the images of the hands and the eye. They're not really interacting with each other. To do that, I had to paint in shadows between the hands and the eyelids. So I did just that. I have this group layer down here for the shadows below the hands and I'll go through each one and show you what I did. So for the bottom hand, I painted in this sort of cast shadow, which basically is just the overarching or longer shadow for the hand depending on the light source. Obviously that light is going to cast a shadow from the hands onto the eyelids. So that's pretty much what this is. And then there's the shadow from where the hands meet the eyelids. It's sort of that crease shadow, that really dark part of the shadow. And that really, really helps incorporate this hand image with the below image. These two shadows combine to give it a really realistic look. So we have the overcast shadow from the overarching light source. And then we have the crease shadow from where the hands actually meet and touch the eyelids. And there's that shadow where light can't reach. And of course I did that for both hands. So you can see up in the top hand here, we have the same deal. Here's just the cast shadow. And then here is the crease shadow. To isolate this, I put a white layer below all these shadow layers just so you could see exactly what I painted in. As you can see, all I did was take a soft brush with a really low brush opacity and paint in these areas here. Actually, all of these parts where you could see the obvious overlap between the brush strokes is because my brush flow was on 100%. And I don't know why I didn't bother with the flow. I just bothered with the opacity of the brush. But usually when you're painting with a brush in Photoshop, you mess with the flow so as to get a smoother transition between the brush strokes. Anyway, that's that. That's how I incorporated the photo of the hands with the photo of the eye below it and sort of made them match and look realistic together. Like I mentioned before, one thing that really, really helped me do that was this black and white adjustment layer on top of everything that allowed me to just focus on the values and the shadows of this rather than worry about the color variation and matching all the colors and all that because I was going to color this all in by myself anyway. Some of you actually might ask me what I prefer to do painting and drawing or whatever in Photoshop if there is a certain drawing tablet I recommend and I hate to disappoint you and I know you're gonna think I'm insane but I do this all on my trackpad. I have a drawing tablet but I for some reason just swear by this trackpad. It's just the most comfortable thing for me and I'm so used to it. I just can't use anything else and I get a lot of hate for that but the real the real trackpad users know. Before we move on to coloring, actually, I did do some filtering on this to get it to have more of that graphite pencil or drawn look. So this is what it looked like just raw after the composite. 
and this is what it looked like after I did all the effects on it. So pretty stark difference. This one obviously looks a lot more like it was drawn with a graphite pencil or something of that matter. Here are the steps that I took to do that. So I merged the whole composite into this one layer down here and then I started duplicating that and throwing filters on it. So the first time I duplicated it, I threw a filter gallery filter on this. It's called graphic pen and it doesn't do a great job at all actually of simulating a graphic pen but we can workshop it a little bit and that's what I did. It's actually not so bad from a distance, but when we zoom in, we can see it gives us these really, really harsh sort of dithered diagonal lines and that just doesn't look too good up close. So how I figured I'd solve that is by blurring this. But before I did that, I wanted to give this more of a cartoonish look. And we could do that by sort of outlining the edges of the design here, as if you were drawing with a pencil per se, and outlining each object in the artwork and then shading it in. But I definitely did not want to do all the outlining by hand. So what I did was another filter gallery filter. So I duplicated my original composite and I used the glowing edges filter in the filter gallery. So if I set this to normal, you can see exactly how that looked. Looks like shit, but it does give us these outlines on uh, different contours within our image. And that was really useful to me. We just had to workshop this a little bit. If you're at all confused, basically I got these filters by going up to filter, filter gallery, and I used different filters on different duplicates of my composite. As you can see here, this is the graphic pen filter that I was just referring to, which I used as a starting point for that graphite pencil look. And then I also used the glowing edges down here to get those outlines of contours within my composite. I just inverted this after using the filter to get the outlines as black on white instead of white on black. But anyway, this is what I ended up with for the glowing edges filter. I just set this to multiply to isolate the black or the black outlines in the filter. This was too strong of an effect, so I turned the opacity down to about 30 and I duplicated that and I layer masked that duplicate into some parts where I thought the outlines could be needed more. And then I just merged all those filters and I was left with this. So here it was before all the filtering and here is the after, but I wasn't done just yet. As I said, up close, that graphic pen filter just doesn't look too good. So what I did was throw a little bit of a box blur on there and then also some motion blur. So just probably a really small radius of like one for the box blur and then some motion blur as well as something very small just to get rid of those really harsh lines that we saw before. So this is after all the blurring and this is before much, much better with all the blurring and whatnot. Looks a lot more like a real pencil drawing. So we got the whole composite out of the way. The graphic looks great, the composite looks good, but we need to bring some life into this. So let's move on to the coloring process. So I did all the coloring using just gradient maps and my soft brush to paint those in where I wanted to. The first thing I did was create a gradient map for the entirety of the composite, sort of just like a wash over the whole thing, just to have a base to work off of. And I did that using this gradient map, super simple gradient map, it's sort of like a skin tone. All it is is black to this beige to white. So that's my base layer here, the skin. Then I moved on to the actual eye. So I have this gradient map here for the whites of the eye. This one's ever so slightly more complex. If I open this up, you can see that we have the shadow as black, but then we have sort of a secondary shadow, which is this bluish greenish color. I don't remember what I was looking at, but I definitely had a reference for this. So I was looking at some eyeball and saw it had some blue tones in it. And I thought that would be a really cool contrast with the yellowish tone right next to it. And then for the mid tones, I just had that beige that we used from before on the skin tone. And that helps sort of fade out that blue and match it with the rest of the graphic. And then obviously the highlight here is white. I also wanted to add some color variance alongside the eyelids close to the eye, sort of like if this color was reflecting onto the eyelids. So I duplicated that gradient map and layer mapped it in onto some of these parts here, sort of like the eye was expelling this color, but it also helped just to blend these colors in uh, with the rest of the skin tones. Next up, we have the hands, which is the same sort of situation here. I created a custom gradient map for the hands. So what I did was grab a selection of them from the composite below, and I made that a layer mask on the gradient map down here. And if I turn that on, you can see the colors that I chose for this hand. I'll go into the properties of the gradient map here. This is probably the most complex gradient map that I used. The reason for that is I really wanted to separate the hands visually from the skin tones of the eyelid, but I also wanted it to blend nicely with the colors and bluish tones of the actual whites of the eyes here. So for the darkest, darkest shadows, it is just a normal black. Then there's a second shadows tone here, which is pretty much just a really dark gray. It's slightly bluish, but the reason I put this here is because for our mid-tones, we have this beige color here, sort of like a skin tone. And if I left out this desaturated gray for the blend between these two colors, then what would happen is this would instead be sort of like a greenish, or warm tone gray that's blending 
the shadows and the midtones here. So I had to add that desaturated, slightly bluish gray tone in here. That way for these parts of the shadows, we don't get that warm gray. We get more of a cool tone, which really helps us match the shadows of the hands with the whites of the eyes here. Then for the midtones, I just have a simple skin tone color here. It's just a really desaturated orange pretty much. And above that, leading into the highlights, I have more of a saturated, a little bit reddish tone uh, skin tone and I added this because I thought having the hands be more of a reddish tone would help separate it from the color of the skin on the eyelids So yeah, I just had that mask to the selection of the hands here and that got us the pretty much complete coloring on the hands But then I did some slight other adjustments to add some more detail in here So I have this group called variance where I layer mask the gradient map that I used on the whites of the eyes onto sort of the knuckle part the bottom part of the knuckle on the hands here again as if the color of the whites of the eyes is reflecting or pushing outwards onto the other objects in the scene. So I just layer mask that onto really small parts of the hands. I have this group here which just has some slight color adjustments onto the hands. It's pretty much just making it darker and a little bit more saturated. And then obviously these rings aren't going to be skin tones, so I gave them their own gradient map and I painted that in over the rings. It's just a bluish tone to sort of give it that silver look. I also have this group here called Reflection. That's a really, really tiny detail. You can barely see it. I just layer masked in a dark levels adjustment to a slight part of the pupil here. I tried to make it look like it was a reflection of the finger. So that's a really small detail. So for the eyes, you might recall that the final graphic had red stoner eyes, but that was actually completely Will's idea. I really liked it with just the blue eyes and this is what I sent to him originally and he had the idea to make the eyes red and give them more of a veiny or like strained look as if you just got like poked in the eye or something so a really good call on his part I did that using this group up here where I greeny mapped in some more red to the whites of the eyes and I threw some veins in there and also HJ in the form of veins which is a really cool idea so to break that down the first thing I did was have this greeny map masked to certain parts of the eye it is really really simple as you can see just a black to red to white and using a lower opacity brush i masked that in to the whites of the eyes here and to give this more of a veiny look i threw in a veins overlay i also added some blur to those veins to give it more of a realistic look as if the blood was sort of spreading from the veins and then i threw in the hj made of veins which i think was just a font but i had to obviously tweak it and stuff to get it to look like an actual vein so yeah super cool stuff i also added this pupil variance layer up here which is just masking this gradient map to half of the people just to give it some more color variance just a look that i thought would be cooler than having a single color eye and obviously having both these colors in here helps match it with the rest of the graphic and then will also wanted me to throw a teardrop in here so i have this layer all the way up here with that teardrop i don't know where i got this teardrop from but i really liked the shaping of it and it sort of looked airbrush-esque to me so i threw that in here i also thought it'd be cool to have that dripping sort of like watercolor so i threw in this watercolor-esque drip that i got from again i don't know where i probably just searched up watercolor on google or something and i just did some basic lighting adjustments using my soft brush to add some highlights onto the tier and then finally a gradient map to blend that in with the rest of the graphic so this is what it looked like after all the initial coloring i was pretty satisfied with this but i thought it could use some minor adjusting so I made a brightness and contrast adjustment layer here. I thought this whole graphic had a little too much contrast in it. So I just cranked the contrast way down and the brightness down a bit as well. And that just helped to flatten out the image. And then up here in this processing group, I've got a little bit more adjustments and I've also got some pattern layers that I've overlaid onto this graphic to give it more of a half tone or retro look. If I zoom in, you can see exactly what I'm saying. So I've got these pattern layers here. I'll turn them all off. These are actually from my depth tone pack, but I'll turn these on so you can see what they're doing. This is just a basic half tone pattern that I overlaid onto the graphic. And this was just to give it more of a cohesive feel texture wise. I did another brightness and contrast adjustment to decrease the contrast. And I have these other two pattern layers up here with more of a dither pattern. Same deal here, just overlaid that onto the image to give it some more texture. And I believe I also layer masked these into certain parts where the texture was needed. Next up, I just threw a vibrance color adjustment layer on here to give the whole artwork a bit more of a saturated feel. And then last but not least, I threw some texture on here. I'm not exactly sure where these textures are from, but it's pretty much just a fabric texture that I overlaid on here to give it more of a worn in look. So I just had this fabric texture set to screen. It's just ingraining that fabric texture into the shadows of the design. And this is our final artwork. And that is how I created this graphic from start to finish. Shout out to Hard Jewelry. I always thank Will for being such a great client and giving me so much creative leg room to express myself and just make some super cool stuff for his brand. That's why you'll always catch me repping the Hard Jewelry. I think there's a reason that whenever I work with them, 
I always make some of the best work I've ever made. So they're awesome. Go check them out. Don't forget to also check out DuranSupply.com for cutting edge Photoshop tools and resources to help you improve on your craft. And also subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.